How you doing, Jeff Zimfer, Loan Officer Marketing TV. Welcome to this week's episode where we're going to talk about the fastest, most effective, proven way to get in front of a lot of agents fast and to quickly grow your agent referral partners in 2012. And I got a hint for you. It's not Facebook, okay? So stay tuned and check it out. Okay, so welcome to this week's episode, and I want to thank you very much for being here and being part of this growing, uh, you know, community of sharing tips, tools, and resources with you, uh, the fellow mortgage professional. We're all about here how to help you more effectively capture and convert real estate agents to referral partners. And why do we focus on agents? Quite simply, because they are the highest ROI. Um, in terms of you know your time, your effort, your resources, marketing-wise, dollar spent, effort put in, there's no better single source than real estate agents to find buyers, qualified buyers, predisposed, pre-sold on using you as the lender of choice. And that's why we focus on realtors. So today I want to talk about something and maybe be, I don't know, a little bit controversial, you know, because what get, what gets all the buzz out there today? When, it, when, when you talk about, oh, you know, how do I grow my business as an originator? How do I get more referrals? How do I get more, right? Everybody's talking about what? Facebook, right? Social media and all that kind of stuff. And listen, I'm here to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold. And I'm going to step out here for a second and say that if you're hanging and banking on Facebook to cultivate and build relationships with realtors, you're wasting your time, okay? You're wasting your time, okay? That's it. I said it there. And this may fly in the face of a lot of what you're seeing and hearing out there and being taught, but Facebook is not the place for you to start and begin and cultivate and convert real estate relationships, okay? That is not where the true connection and trust and affinity is going to be built. I'll tell you where it's going to be built. It's going to be, bu be built in your local community, belly to belly, face to face with agents, having a true connection, not just a conversation, but a true connection and a true you know, exchange of value being added. Now, with that said, Facebook has its place, don't get me wrong, but for you originators who are watching this and being sold that bill of goods that, hey, all you got to do is you know share a bunch of content on Facebook, it's not going to happen. And you're probably nodding your head up and down saying, yeah, what relationships have you gotten from Facebook yet? The truth is, the relationships come from Facebook because you've already built those relationships in person, face to face, and they're part of your overall marketing campaign and marketing platform. Very rare and very unlikely that those connections, those referrals, are gonna come exclusively on Facebook alone. Does that mean you shouldn't be using Facebook? No, it just means, in my humble opinion, and I'd love to hear your response to this, in my humble opinion, Facebook alone is, is not gonna do it for you. And how do I know this? Not only from my own experience of nine years of originating loans, 80% realtor referrals, but also from the other top producers that I've interviewed, some of which you can find on this blog here under Originator Hot Seats, free interviews for you to check out. All right, here's today's lesson, right? Here we are, it's still January 2012, still you know on that ramp to getting off to a fast start in your career for 2012 and you know reaching your goals. So my question for us is, what's the fastest way to get more agents now? Okay, the fastest way. And let me, let's take a look at some of the options, some of the training that perhaps you know you've been taught out there and maybe been doing for a while. Oh, how about you know go to broker preview? Hmm. You know, uh, geez, is the right agent even at the broker preview? How about go attend open houses? Eh, not bad. I've done both. You know, the problem is they're hit and miss. It's not predictable, and it takes a long time and a lot of intensive manual labor. And listen, I'm not going to sell you on a bill of goods that says that you don't have to put labor in to be successful in this business. You do. It's going to take that four-letter word, W-O-R-K. Okay. But I'm all about how do we how are we more effective and leveraged with the labor that we're putting in. That's the key for me. I don't want to be digging a ditch if I'm not going to be building my mansion, you know, in, in laying the foundation for that in my business, right? I want to be using the tools I can to dig that, build that foundation as fast as I possibly can. And so here's the key to success with real estate agents, okay? Key to success is number one, what do you have to do to be successful with real estate agents? Well, it's real simple, okay? And here's my handy dandy little uh, workflow chart here. 
Number one, you've got to simply get in front of agents, right? Sounds pretty simple, sounds pretty obvious. Truth of the matter is, truth test time, here's a question. How many agents have you gotten in front of so far this month? Right? How many? One, two, four, five? And the other question to ask yourself is, how many agents do you need in your, your bucket to build the level of referrals and close loans that you want every single month? You know, odds are you're probably going to need a few more agents now than you did three, four, five years ago because agents as a whole tend to be doing a little bit less transaction per agent, right? Until you get up into the top 10% and above of super, you know, mega agents who are doing a large share of the business. And we'll talk about that in future episodes. But number one, you got to get in front of agents. And again, I'm not talking about on Facebook. Get off of Facebook. Get out in your local community. If I could reach through the camera and just wake up, okay? Number one, you got to get in front of agents. Number two, what's the next step once you get in front of agents? You got to qualify the agent, right? How do you know this agent is the right agent for you? How do you know what their production is? How do you know um, if they're a buyer's agent or a listing agent, right? Might be useful to know. How do you know what they did last year? Do they have a team? Do they already have a lender on their team? Are they happy with that lender or not? Are they open to new possible relationships with you, right? Do you have a relationship match, a value match? Do you have a synergy, right? Are you guys, you know, of a similar, <coughs> excuse me, a similar values or core? Okay, those things are important and relevant because you're talking about building a relationship. Okay, not that you have to be best friends with every single one of the agents, but it is a relationship, and there has to be a certain amount of, of um, compatibility there. So you've got to have a process and a system for qualifying those agents. By the way, on this blog is another free resource for you. Under resources, it's the top 50 questions you should be asking agents when you meet with them. You don't have to answer all the, ask all the questions, but it's a nice guideline for you to run on, a track for you to run on when you're meeting with your agents and coffee and things like that. Right? Be able to get important, relevant information from them. You know, appear like you know what you're talking about because you have a script to run on. You have real, tangible questions and have a natural curiosity to understand and learn about this agent's business. What's working? What's not working? What's their history? You know, um, what's their family? You know, set up? Do they have kids or not kids? What are their ultimate goals and things like that? Right? You want to be able to qualify this agent and find out do you have a connection? Right? A personality match? Okay. So once you've gotten in front of agents, you've quali you qualify the agents, what's the next step? And this is, quite frankly, these, these, these well, all three, to be, to be truthful, but it's one thing to get in front of agents, it's a whole other thing to actually qualify them and determine if they're actually you know, an A, B, or C level agent and what category you're going to put them in, which is going to determine what type of time investment you put into that relationship, A, B, or C, based on some, some criteria such as production and you know, personality match and things like that. Because, quite frankly, there are some top producing agents that you uh, may not want to work with. Or you may want to work with at an arm's distance. Or it's okay to be that top producing agent's second lender of choice. Okay? It's okay to be that, right? If there isn't the relationship match there. Or if in the beginning of the relationship, look, they tell you, uh, you know, I'm telling you, my, my lender's really good. I've been loyal to them for the past eight years. I really can't see any reason why I would give up that relationship. Hey, fine, no problem. I'm not asking for you to replace your existing lender relationship. If that's the situation, here's what I say to them. I say, totally understand, get it. I think it's great that you're loyal uh, to your lender. And that really says a lot about you as a human being. So I respect that. Would you, have, however, consider you know, having me as your second choice in the event that ever something ever goes south or maybe your lender's on vacation, can't be reached, I don't know, whatever it is. But you know, something often in life something comes up and you need a second opinion. Would you be open to having me be on your team as your second lender of choice? Now, guys, you may think that, oh, I don't want to be the second lender of choice, forget that. But the truth of the matter is, is hey, you're not always going to be you know, the first one to get the dance, right? They're already dating somebody else. You're going to have to accept that. They're in a relationship with somebody else. You're not going to bat a thousand percent every single time. But you can position yourself to be there for when the opportunity does come. And more importantly, you're building that relationship. Now you can go back and have, you know, meet that, you know, continue to build that relationship with that agent and ultimately get referrals from that agent. Maybe not referrals to buyers immediately. How about referrals to other agents, right? You can leverage off of that. We can talk more about that if you're interested. Okay. Third and final. Number three, convert. How good are you at converting? What's your process for converting? Do you have a system for converting agents to referral partners? 
all three of these together, this is the only way that this works successfully, is you have a process for getting in front of agents, you have a process for qualifying those agents to determine if it's the right fit for you, and then thirdly, you have a process for converting. That means once you leave that meeting, right, if you haven't converted and, met and reached an agreement, a commitment from that agent that you're going to now engage and move forward and engage in some activities, helping them qualify some buyers, some co-marketing activities, maybe, you know, hosting different things together, cross-promoting each each other, you know, whatever it is, calling their leads for them. If you haven't agreed from that, so what's your process going to be to convert that relationship over time? How are you going to continue to add value? How are you going to get them to move from the point of, hey, yeah, kind of interested to let me send you a deal? What is your process for that? Okay? It comes down to if you don't have a process for it, you don't know what you're doing. And you're simply winging it. So I'd like to hear from you. What's your process? Share from me how you convert agents to relationships and referrals, okay? So those are the three things you got to do to be successful with agents. Get in front of them, qualify them, and convert them, right? Now, here's the last big point of this. You can see behind me, I've got this little picture here. That's an oil well, okay? And what you want to be focused on in 2012 is generating oil wells in your business. What's an oil well? An oil well is any source of business that once tapped, right, it continues to produce referrals, revenue, loans, closed loans, money for you, using the metaphor of the oil well. And if you think about it, real estate agents, and if you don't believe me, read the National Association of Realtors Profile of Home Buyers and Sellers Report on this blog under resources. I paid for it, $150, it's free for you. And it'll show you in there that even those folks who still search online to find a home and things like that, 90% of them still use a realtor to purchase their home. 90%. What does that mean? That means overwhelmingly an, a realtor is an oil well. A realtor is the number one source still in today's market and for the foreseeable long-term future, the number one source for purchase business, for finding buyers. And when you get a buyer through a realtor, eight out of 10 times, the, the buyer's already pre-sold on using you if you've got the relationship set up properly and you're doing the right things. So the question for you is, how many oil wells can you tap in 2012, right? How many realtors can you get in front of? How many realtors are you going to be able to qualify and convert so that they turn into a producing oil well for you? Does this make sense? This whole process here, if it makes sense, let me know. Share your comments below. And then the last thing I'll share with you is this.